When people think Japan, they think city. But today, let me show you something very, very different. The countryside. My name is Marvin, and welcome to The Global Citizen. In today's journey, let me take you to the eastern peninsula of Wakayama in the city of Shingu. With a total population of only 29,000, this city has the most number of restaurants per capita, which means there is a large potential restaurants to be sampled in this area. Today is the beginning of the Kumano Boat Festival, to which I was invited to participate in the tour, thanks to Shingo City Tourism Association and Go Voyaging. So we're currently on the train heading up to Shingo City. Um, it actually took us approximately how long? Two hours. Mike? Two hours? To, to, from Tokyo? To Nagoya? Yeah, yeah. And three hours to Shingu. Wow. Pretty long, eh? Five hours. Five hours! As Mike did point out earlier, it does take around five hours to travel from Tokyo to Shingu City. It is best advised to bring a few snacks, some food, some form of entertainment, and perhaps maybe some uh, comfort uh, in the form of a travel pillow to help ease the burden of travels on your way to Shingu. So we're approximately an hour into our journey. Uh, we've apparently arrived at a place called Sit, which according to this guy um, is apparently the, uh, the shortest name. The, the, the shortest city name in the world. Oh my god, look, Kenji, 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 Kenji. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Two thousand years later. We finally arrived at the Shingu station and was greeted by the friendly staff waiting for our arrival. They sent our luggages to the new Palace Hotel and we were on our way to a very friendly sushi restaurant in front of the station. This restaurant was established over 70 years ago. The sushi has been selected as one of Wakayama's finest. One of the local specialities is Sanma Sushi, but they do have a large variety on hand as well. They have a very active social media presence and an English menu for those who are wanting to try a traditional sushi bar without the fear of the language barrier. One of the things about dining at a Japanese restaurant is that there's so many techniques and that you need to be considered of. For example, we're having difficulty trying to eat the head and the tail. Mm. Yeah. Here we go. I almost look like an Arabian princess, but right behind me is a place called Jewel for the Coin. It is one of the World Heritage Sites located here in Shingo City. Now, legend has it is that the, uh, one of their Chinese emperors were actually looking for um, what they call the elixir of eternal life in this particular area. And so that's why this place is actually quite um, important. It's one of the most important aspects of the Shingo City uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it is absolutely perfect. Right behind me is apparently the gravestone belonging to Jofuka. As you can see, it's actually quite eerie, eh? Yeah. He used to have a certain line. Mm -hmm. That's what he was looking for. Ah. I think he didn't find it. Quite a bit. Little did we realize that the plants around the shrine were actually the elixir of life. These plants contain a large number of vital nutrients to help combat common ailments. You are able to sample and purchase the tea brewed from these plants. So we've arrived at this restaurant that apparently doesn't have any uh, sign to advertise that it is a restaurant. Um, it's probably one of the most non touristy things you can actually do here. This store creates small Japanese sweets and is renowned in Shinko City for almost three family generations. All handmade, using traditional methods and food such as red beans, it is definitely something you should consider buying as a present. Line up the 
Right behind me is a shop that makes famous uh, sushi wrapped in persimmon leaf. We're about to... Oh, hey! <laughs> uh, we're about to taste um, one of uh, Shingo's finest delicacies. Um, I wonder what the taste is going to be like. Mm. What do you mean? This specialty sushi restaurant is located near Kumano Haya Tamatai Sha. There are two kinds of persimmon leaf sushi, salmon and mackerel, and are both handmade every morning. Our next location is called Hamataya Taisha. It's one of the main UNESCO World Heritage Sites here in Shinya City. Um, the colors and the feel that you receive from this place is reminiscent of that of uh, Fushimi Inari Taisha, um, which is located okay just in the area of Kyoto. Right behind me is one of the special trees, um, which is apparently 800 years old. Yeah, despite the bad weather, it's actually quite, quite peaceful. Um, considering the fact that um, the shrine itself is very, 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 very quiet, um, I can imagine that some people can actually uh, come in here uh, and just be able to sit down and relax, especially after hard days. As you can probably see right behind me, um, it is the Kumano Boat Festival happening today. It will still go ahead regardless of the weather. It is raining. One thing I can credit the Japanese people for is their ability to kind of withstand the elements and still continue with the festivals as planned. We're right located near the riverbank um, where the Kumano Boat Festival is about to commence. Um, hey, hi, do you know much about this festival? Not so much actually. Hmm. <laughs> Neither do I. I'll perhaps maybe go, go back to the commentary after this. You know the time when you're trying to get a good shot? This is the time. The official name to this festival is the Kumano Mifune Matsuri. Earlier, a shrine or a mikoshi, believed to be encompassing one of the local deities, has been transferred to a boat in the Kumano River. Nine boats of able-bodied men now row towards an island in the middle of the Kumano River, in which the boat carrying the mikoshi follows. This is to commemorate the birthday of the Kumano Paisha, as well as to signify the presence of the deities that still protect the area. <laughs> At the end of the Kumano Mifune Matsuri, a ceremonial torch is lit and used to guide the Mikoshi into the riverbanks where the Shinto monks and the followers await to conduct and even repair for the future prosperity and good health. My personal experience surrounding this was quite breathtaking. The chants and the experiences in the 30-minute vigil opened my eyes further into the Zen and the Shinto Buddhism and was interesting to bear witness too. There were some limitations during the filming of this since it was entirely dark and raining and more so, there are only some experiences worth seeing in person to absorb. If you like this video, please give this like a page and a subscribe. Comment and message me as to your recommended places that not many people see but should. This is Marvin from The Global Citizen. Hope to see you next time.